a lot of people nowadays are watching television, they're seeing tattooing on television, but Hell City is their chance to step beyond television and experience tattooing for themselves. And tonight's guest, here on the Louis Sapphire Show, is uh, Derek Morrison, tattoo extraordinaire. Put your hands together. Come on out here, Derek. My name is Der Morrison. I am the madman and organizer of the Hell City Tattoo Festival since 2002. I'm also a tattoo artist here in Columbus, Ohio at Red Tree Tattoo Gallery. And I'm also the uh, owner of True Tattoo Supply here in Columbus as well. The idea for Hell City came from me hitting so many conventions like back in the day. You know, I started hitting conventions when I was about 18 years old. And then as I got older and started kind of like looking at how people were organizing conventions, I noticed a lot of like kind of shortcomings that they were doing. They weren't really putting the focus on the artists or the visual presentation of conventions. The organization was off, uh, things like that. Some conventions I didn't even get electric till 2 p.m. So I saw, saw a lot of like issues with conventions I was doing back then that I wanted to kind of like, kind of remedy, you know, and, and bring something a little bit more focused on the artists, the art of tattooing, and to represent it in like in a, a positive light, you know? So that's what we've always done with Hell City is trying to make it a, a family friendly, a very positive outlook on tattooing, you know, through doing the convention with the uh, the events, the high caliber artists, live painting, so we can show people that we're not just artists on skin, we're artists on canvas as well. So the culmination of everything we've done all these years has really brought conventions to another level. We're like a well-oiled machine and everybody has a responsibility, a chore, a task. Four signs. That'll go on an easel. This will be for downstairs. This goes to the side door, side of the closed door down there. There is just so many responsibilities, and with this team that we have, the Derv is assembled. Um, well oiled machine. There is not a kink in our log from AV to people watching the door to people volunteering. Volunteers are everything. Hell City's a monster, man. It's it's ever evolving. It gets faster, better, lighter every year. We get new equipment and updates every year. It is always changing and getting better. But with that being said, I feel like we've already set the bar pretty high. <laughs> um, I, I love what we do. So I, as far as making major changes, I think he's got the formula down pretty well. And I'm just here to say yes, sir, and turn the lights and volume up, so. Hi. <laughs> Literally, there's nothing like the Hell City crew. I couldn't do Hell City on my own, ever. I mean, I can organize it and stuff like that, but when it's go time, the Hell City crew's is so important, so vital to running things. They all have a good good attitude. They've all been working for me long enough, too, that they know a lot of the, the, the attending artists, you know, the collectors that are coming through. And they just, you know, they, they know the show really well. And they're super friendly, super nice. They're here for tattooing, you know, and they literally step up. I don't think, I don't think anything goes unmanaged, even with like the artists. If you need something to Hell City, my team, boom, they get on it, you know? So everything's covered. And I think it really shows too, because a lot of the artists say that about how like prompt we are, how friendly, you know, and courteous and stuff like that. So like I said, I can't do it without the crew. The crew's amazing they love doing it too. So I've gotten to a point, I've been doing this 21 years, to turn 50 years old now. I've been doing it since I was 29. 21 years later, I'm going, okay, when, where's the end? When do I stop this? You know, does the wheel stop rolling? So I thought about doing it, you know, taking a break. But my crew, my crew loves this show. The collectors love this show. The artists love this show. I don't do this anymore for myself. I do it for the community, for the industry. For my workers, they don't want. It. They love doing this. It gives them a whole different lifestyle, you know. So having them, like, like I said, I couldn't do it. And the the team, the Hell City crew, is super vital. You, oh. <laughs> he's mean mugging you. Oh, <laughs> are you a little lovey boy? Yes. Jules, Jules is my main dami. Jules is the queen of Hell City, pretty much. She organizes everything she updates the websites takes care of all the legalities sign things i mean she is one of a kind for real best job that i've ever had hands down um i love my time here and it's been a fantastic ride so far to me hell city is everything i live and breathe this show um 
you guys only come here for three days and for the rest of us it's a, a whole year of planning and and getting it right and when it comes to uh, together at the end here for this three day uh, extravaganza is the best feeling is uh, it means everything to me and just seeing everybody's happy faces and um, the whole the whole thing go right is, is everything so I love it wouldn't change anything so Jules is one of a kind she's got my best interest in mind also which is really important by not letting people pull any kind of shady stuff on us because when you're doing big business you you get people to either take try to take advantage of you your money situation so she really keeps a, a tight eye on me and the convention you know day in day out you know every day we have phone meetings and we work together online so i i couldn't do this without jules literally it's it's the crew too but jules is organization and um, you know doing all the booth sales and stuff like that so jules is phenomenal it's a very limited show and we could sell this out every year probably six times over um, the amount of people that apply is just out of this world um, and we only have 150 booth spaces so we have to go through that list with a fine tooth comb and, and pick out the best artists, uh, the best kind of people to be here, you know. All of the artists that we have here are usually top notch. It takes a lot to get in here, the waiting list is huge. Um, there's people that have been waiting more than a decade to get into the show, so um, which is longer than I've been working for it. And um, I don't know, the artists, uh, everyone that comes here is amazing. They, the, they know the circuit. Uh, we have the odd few new people, but for the majority, it's the seasoned tattooers. We welcome new people in, by all means. You've got to have the best portfolios, um, but it's limited. And uh, as much as we would like to have everyone in here, we just can't. So. Um, we, we pick artists accordingly and uh, everybody on both floors gets the best time. If they come here, they get the best time. We try and make it awesome for them. It's a perfect place to come and get tattoos of Satan, maybe, or uh, fire. You know, I'm just throwing some ideas out there for somebody that's on the fence. You know, don't, let's let think unicorns and happy shit. You know, let's, uh, blood, you can get something bloody. Serial killers are always nice. Nothing says uh, Mother's Day like a nice mom tattoo with uh, Anthony Perkins. There you go. Perfect example. I just want to be in it. I just want to be in it. I should be in it, right? So this is our 32nd Hell City. Uh, over 21 years. So another part of Hell City, right at the main stage is my AV crew. They're always over there, they keep an eye on the stage. They set the stage, they break it down, they get ready for the performers, they get the songs ready. Literally, they're like the, the voice and the sound of Hell City, you know. Brian Midkiff is one of my main AV guys, as well as Ben Thomas. Brian Midkiff's been with me for a long time, you know. He's a great guy, he's got an amazing collection of tattooing. But Brian works on the show all year long like we do. Hell City, I mean, it starts from opening up the doors, getting, your, getting some people in there, uh, it starts by going right to our AV booth, um, getting the music all plugged in, ready to go, turning the house sound on. It's my happy place, man. It's where I come to let my freak flag fly. Uh, it's encompassing. I love the environment here. You don't get it anywhere else. It's amazing. It's a great art experience from every walk of what is put on here from burlesque to people painting, tattooing, getting into just love and fun. <laughs> I am your head admissions lady at the front desk. I've been working for Derb for probably since like 2010 now, so over 13 years. We had something called Hex City. I was putting temporary tattoos on underage kids or just 
you know, the normies that didn't want to get a real tattoo. Um, started off doing that and then kind of started, moved over to merch, selling merch for them. And then now I'm up at admissions and telling people to keep their wristbands on. <laughs> I am by a weekend pass because you're not going to see everything all in one, one day. Um, and check out everybody's other items. It's not all just about the t tattoos, it's about the art too. I come here and I collect stickers. I like stickers, um, I like prints, I like to support each artist, even though I don't get tattooed by every single one, I don't have time. Um, I try and like purchase something from them from at least <laughs> every other booth. I, I, I don't know, I come out of here with a lot of stuff. So uh, bring money, try and get a weekend pass if you can do it, um, and just come and enjoy the show. Hands down, one of the best festivals I've been to or worked at. Um, there's other shows out there, but this one's quality. <laughs> So Hell City in itself is so much more than just tattooing. Not to take away from tattooing in itself, that's why we're all here, but it all brought us together. So Hell City is one of the best tattoo shows in America. Um, I've been doing lots of European shows because I'm originally from London, England. Um, so when I came to America and started going to Hell City, I just was blown away about all the love and just attention to detail that Hell City has. Um, not a lot of shows do that nowadays, so it was just really, really nice to see someone that actually cares. It is actually my husband's show, so a little bias there, but um, I will say I do many shows here in America and I always tell people that, you know, Hell City, regardless of it being my husband's show, is seriously one of my favorite shows that I do. It just has the best people, so much love, and it's just all around fun. You know, we, we have top-notch acts. You can tell because the performers are one of a kind, you know. Some of the other shows you go to, you're like, huh. You know, but when you come to Hell City, you're gonna get uh, amazing looking stage, amazing performances, great crowd, like the crowd activity and the crowd participation at Hell City is, is really, really good. You guys seen Serena Fox? Yeah, burlesque show, she kills it. My homeboy Ty Reed made that pumpkin. That, did, did you mention Ty Reed? Ty Reed, Steam Power SFX Productions. He's got that booth out there with all that sick artwork. Ah, oh, that dude's so fucking awesome. And I hear his penis is big too. For this weekend at Hell City, I am doing my pumpkin burlesque act. Um, Todd made me a huge pumpkin where I actually go inside. It smokes and glows green, which is really cool. Um, I made the entire outfit myself and I have a pumpkin on my head. Um, I actually am debuting it here, uh, so this is the first time I'm actually doing it, and I'm really, really excited because it's something I've been talking about a long time, and just doing it at Hell City just means so much more to me because how much I love the show. Um, it's just putting my love then into it as much as I can as well. You know, it's grown into to bigger acts. We've had a lot of Guinness Book of World Record acts. We've went from only Columbus, Ohio to Phoenix, Arizona. We started in 2008, so we do it at the Biltmore down there as well, and that's got a that's grown a lot over the years. Hell City's expanded not just from the main ballroom. Like when we first started, it was just in the main ballroom and the foyer. Now we got two more ballrooms downstairs with shopping hallways, and it's all connected to the bar with pre parties and after parties and things like that. So the expansion of Hell City over the years has been pretty enormous, actually. It's kind of doubled in size, but the acts over the years, too. You know, when we originally came in, I think we were just having like a freak show, a couple bands, and contests. You know, now we got burlesque, freak shows, contests, just all kinds of different acts going on on the stage, you know. So it's expanded, you know, uh, entertainment wise. It's also expanded visually. Now we have all the circus banners hanging, you know, through the aisles and things like that. And we've just gone on to make it a more and more visual experience for people, you know, over the years. So um, even with the, like the acts that we have, we had the Monsters of Schlock this year. They're Guinness World Record performers out of Canada.
And we also have Sergeant Device, who uh, is a drag king as well. She is doing a Freddy Krueger style act. And we also have Lulu, who is the reigning Miss Exotic World from last year's performance, which is one of the biggest burlesque competitions in the world. And she's actually voted number two most influenced like performer in the whole entire world. Uh, my name is Jeff Solon. Uh, I am the MC, and the host of Hell City. Uh, I've been doing this for every single Hell City that's ever happened. I brought Jeff Solon on as an MC literally from the get go. I've known Jeff for a long time, like literally since my son was born. So I've known him for probably 27, 28 years. Since I think 96 or something like that. I know, no, sorry. Since 93, 93, 94. Um, we just hung out and then hit it off and then became buddies and um, we fast forward enough, he was one of my grooms, one of my wedding. We've been married for 24 years, so been around for a long time. Um, and just randomly, he was like, dude, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do a tattoo convention. You wanna be the MC? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how to MC. <laughs> He's like, figure it out. So when I was putting together Hell City, I had to think of what MC, what personality I wanted on the microphone. I didn't want to MC it. I, there's too much, you know, too much going on for me to actually sit and MC. Um, but Jeff, Jeff is well spoken. We call him Superfly Solon. He's funny. He's super witty. Um, you know, and he's just really good on the mic. He's got a good, soothing voice. He doesn't say like dirty, raunchy stuff. He says very smart stuff. Even his trivia are like fact, mathematical facts and things like. He's up there doing Rubik's cubes against people in the audience, you know? So he's a really entertaining, you know, MC for the show. Uh, this is probably one of the weirdest side hustles I've ever had in my life. Um, I am not uh, a full-time professional tattoo convention MC. <laughs> I don't think there's a, lot, a big community of those people out there. It's not like we have our own convention, you know, where all the MCs get together and uh, we have like workshops. They're like, all right, so when you're, gonna, you're gonna hold the mic like this, because hold it like this doesn't really, Impact the crowd. Everybody practice. Sorry, everybody. grab turn to four, uh, page 40 on your uh, notebook. So over the years, Hell City's kind of grown into a whole different monster. You know, when I started Hell City, it was 2002. And I just, that's when I had the idea, you know, and the first show came about. They get, everybody that was tattooing for me back then too, didn't really know what I was, you know, planning and organizing. They knew I was doing a convention, but they didn't know that I was doing something to the caliber that it is now, you know? Man, when this show first started, uh, I didn't really have any conception of what it was, just kind of helped with my dad. My son's growing up with this, you know? And here he is still. My son's still on the team, on the crew. He's like part of the AV crew and, you know, helps run the whole thing. And he's a part of it all year, too, because he's got to deal with me working on the show. So when he comes to visit me sometimes in my warehouse, all we're doing is working on Hell City. For me growing up, like, Hell City was just kind of like a gathering of people who was like my family to me all the artists that I've grown up with, with my dad uh, and all of his shops. Across the city, man, I know so many artists and it's just been kind of when it first started, just the gathering of all the local artists and stuff and I just watched it grow into something bigger. Well, he's grown up in a tattoo shop. He was born, like four days later, he was like in the tattoo shop. You know, he grew up around Hell City, he's 27. So when he was six years old, he was one of those kids at Hell City. And now he's 27, sleeved out. You know, he, he, he aspiring to be a tattoo artist as well, so. My dad, man, when I first started, he was just my hero. Made me realize how much of a legend he was just in the art industry and how much time he's put in over the years to being a name in the industry, being well respected and kind of putting on one of the best shows there. I love everything he's done, but most importantly, I know what this means to everybody else. Just watch it all start in my dad's basement, man. From the idea, I watched him sketch out actually the first devil for Hell City. I remember that day when he came up with the idea of Hell City and decided he wanted to start a show. I remember kind of him approaching every artist in the shop at that time and kind of asking them for ideas and how he would go about it. Just started from square one and built it all. Yeah, so Hell City, when I first started doing it, you know, I was doing a lot of sketches and a lot of ideas, writing a lot of things out. So I started sketching one of the original Devil Heads back then, you know, for the convention. And um, I didn't know what imagery he wanted to do, but I thought the Devil Head 
perfectly played into it. You know, it's gone on to be a lot of our logos, t-shirts, hats, and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought that um, rather than just a normal tattoo image, like an eagle or something like that, we had to go with the devil head. You look over and see him making all of this, you know? <laughs> He's asking us, like, does this blood spatter look good on, like, a Bernie? I remember distinctly him like thinking there was too much blood on Bernie's face and stuff like that when he was making a t-shirt oh, yeah, yeah. Bernie. You know? <laughs> you know, we've had many versions of what we call Bernie. So our, our mascot is called Bernie. We also have Louis Sapphire nowadays, which is Todd Reed out there. But with the artwork, we thought, you know, the devil had to be a good kind of a brand or a logo that we could continue on some of the clothing. And it's become recognized in the tattoo industry. You can tell a Hell City logo nowadays, you know. So that's kind of where all the uh, the logos started. No, I would say he put a lot more effort into merch, kind of in the beginning and designing things, getting good logos and posters and stuff. But, I mean, it's always just been quality art. So originally, Hell City was a merchandise line that we had. It was a clothing line of, uh, tat you know, pretty much tattoo designs on T-shirts back in the day for, with, that I had with my first studio. Uh, which was stain skin I started in 1994. With that, we had Hell City Industries, and that was purely a clothing company that we had different tattooers that either worked for me or that I knew that designed clothing. And to me, it was one of the first like tattoo clothing lines back in the mid 90s, you know, that just focused on tattoo images. So that that went on for about five, six years. We did the clothing, and then um, we were doing our own screen printing and all that. Uh, there came to a point when me and the business partner with Hell City Industries with the clothing line we kind of split. I kept the name. He took the press and all that because uh, I didn't really want to do t-shirt printing anymore. So I kept the name and it was Hell City Industries for a long time. So when I started getting the idea and started organizing the convention, um, originally it was going to be called the Capital City Arts and Music Fest because Columbus, Ohio is the capital city of Ohio. So that was the first idea for the title to kind of encompass everything on that. But then I was looking at the neon that I still had that was on my, my tattoo studio and it said Hell City Industries. So one day I was like, what do we name it? And then I looked at the neon, you know, and I just saw, I saw the word Hell City. And Hell City, you say the word Hell, one, it's catchy, you know, and then Hell City, twice as catchy. So then we just put the tattoo fest with it. So that's pretty much how it came, came about. It came from a tattoo clothing line that later on went to be a tattoo convention. Nothing says. I'm a good guy, like when you show up and you're wearing a Hell City t-shirt. Just being around it all, I mean, we've seen it start from square one, you know? Well, there was like true tubes in the garage, like he literally stuffed a whole garage full of true tubes. And it was to the point where he didn't want to do it in the beginning. And then he did it, and then it got too big to where he went. The whole basement had the, the couches, take the couches out, take everything off the walls, fill it full of true tubes. And then it got to the point where I have to buy a warehouse now, dude. Yeah, there's like and a then, half a foot hallway in my whole, from my garage to my whole basement. There's nothing else. You had to be outside. Boxes. We couldn't play inside no more. Like, you couldn't play video games or nothing. We had to go outside all the time because it was true tubes warehouse. It was his house. <laughs> it's crazy how, like, I don't know, like, seeing it, like, go from that to a warehouse to him attaching a warehouse to a tattoo shop and him still just creating creating like those new ballpoint pens every day he comes back for biggest like i was supposed to relax <laughs> i made like three more products <laughs> you know it's crazy how he does it his mind is very unique and it definitely like he's so cool so when i'm not doing hell city i have a red tree tattoo gallery here in columbus ohio in that facility that I have is uh, True Tattoo Supply, you know, and the workers from Red Tree and True Tattoo Supply also come to Hell City every year. We got Jessica, first person you'll see when you're coming into Hell City. She runs the True Tattoo Supply booth right there, which a lot of the artists get their supplies for the weekend, you know, before they get going and stuff. So Jess is an incredibly hard worker too. She works all year round with us too. Not just True Tattoo Supply, but helping with Hell City, helping pack things, get ready. Um, and she's just a phenomenal worker, you know, she, she runs my entire warehouse, you know, and she's, she stays late, works, I mean, she just works really, really hard, and it's evident, and she's somebody, too, that, like, when you come to Hell City, she's that friendly face, she knows everybody, she's a huge collector, knows tattooing, which is another thing, too, you know, so, yeah, having Jessica as a part of the crew is, is vital. I don't know how to put my finger on it, but there's just something different about Hell City, like especially when you talk to other artists. There's artists that just won't do other shows. The one show they do all year is Hell City. 
Hell City literally has some of the best tattoo artists that come here. So it's one of the best conventions to come to, to actually come meet some artists, get their cards and just do some research on your artists. It's very important if you're going to put a piece of artwork on you for life to get it done by someone who is talented and amazing. And we have like 250 artists here who are the best of the best. It's really special. And the contribution to tattooing as a whole is immeasurable. I know um, in my apprenticeship, all I heard about was Hell City. Like, if you make it into that show, you've made it. I love the show. It's amazing being next to so many good artists that I look up to, meeting so many people that I've, like, just watched throughout the years and, like, learned from, and now it's just, I don't know, it's an honor to be here. I mean, it's top tier, you know, it's the one that you hold the standard to for your convention. If you threw a convention, would you not want it to be like Hell City? We see a lot of convention promoters that actually come to Hell City to get ideas for their shows or see how we're doing things and, and see how we're making a difference with tattoo conventions. I've been coming to Hell City probably 17 years or so, 16, 17 years. Hell City has probably been the pinnacle of elevating tattooing throughout my career. I feel like um, it's been something I looked up to. So when I started Indie Tattoo Expo, it was my kind of viewpoint if you will you know to look at it was like that's the mark you got to be headed towards and i think for the last 20 years that hell city has been a place of elevating artists not only artistically but professionally i would say this show probably brings like the highest standard out of people the work you see here is like super intense you know it's like a big family i feel like it's the same people every year plus like another 20 so it's just like a big reunion party uh i feel like this convention makes up the scattered artist over all the other conventions so when you get to this one it's just you see everybody from the year so it's just like a big ass party i love it phoenix is a little better but love it that pull that pull i'm just saying to me it's always been the pinnacle of shows um when you know i was a young tattooer i uh, hill city was always the show i wanted to be a part of um and then when I finally got the invite, I just, I've never missed a show if I can help it. Every tattooer here is, you know, on an elite level. So it's, it's just awesome to be surrounded by people that are so talented and inspiring. I think what I like the most is it's got a good family vibe to it. The public is real friendly. Um, there's never any problems, no bullshit, you know. Uh, I don't have to deal with any politics. I don't have to um, uh, really do anything but have a good time, tattoo, and meet the fans and see old friends, you know. Uh, Derb puts on, what he has is authenticity, you know. He's a real tattooer, and, and I think shows should be put on by real tattooers. Uh, and this being the best example that I know of right now of... Uh, you know, supporting a tattoo convention that's put on by a tattoo artist. I like that. So the tattoo competitions at Hell City, you know, the artists want the awards. If you win a Hell City award, it's it's something, man. A lot of these shops I go into, they, they have awards, but the Hell City awards are always towards the front. They're super proud. Competing at Hell City, you're going to get some of the, the heaviest hitters out there. I'll be honest, I looked up to this show before I was even tattooing. I thought it'd be dope just to come to the show one day when I first started just fucking around, apprenticing, things like that. To win here, to judge, art fusions, all that, man, like, that shit, this this uh, convention raises confidence like crazy. You know what I mean? We're all self-doubting, we all think we don't deserve. And when people like Derb who have access to everybody who wanna go to a show and you get picked to come here, that shit lifts you up, man. It makes you feel like you belong. And then too, it drives me to next year come back and bring pieces, like I wanna contribute. There's pieces there that are fucking insane. I want to bring work that can stand next to that and be respected by your peers. And, you know, it's inspiring to see what the, the limits are, or how limited it is to get tattoos that are crazy detailed and just the saturation layout. I mean, every aspect of these tattoos are fucking phenomenal. So it's just good to be surrounded by that and to be accepted by that group is phenomenal as well. I still feel like we don't uh, belong here. You know what I mean? Like one day they're going to find out we're all phonies, but <laughs> yeah, it feels great, dude. I, I love this show. The tattoos that are on that main stage are hard to judge because there's not a bad tattoo up there, you know? So therefore, when the competitions go down, everybody that gets up there 
obviously thinks their tattoos are good enough to win or they wouldn't be up on the stage, you know. Our system of, of judging and things like that, we do the card system. You know, each, each judge gets a certain amount of cards. You give them out to your favorite tattoos. And we kind of whittle the categories down until we have the final winners, you know. Sometimes people do get, you know, they could be sore losers and stuff like that because, like I said, they wouldn't be up there if they didn't think they were going to be winning. You know, everybody's tattoo is their pride and joy. You know, so I, I get it. Sometimes people have, you know, they're sad when they get off the stage. And I'm the guy that has to eliminate them and be like, thank you. Thanks for entering. You know, but it's not an easy job. All the judges always are like, this is difficult. Almost more than most conventions. There's really heavy hitters here. People want those Hell City trophies, you know. So people can actually get mad because their tattoo doesn't win? That's because it's not done by Darren Morrison, bitch. Yeah, I kissed his ass right here on camera. That's my dog. You know, so, I don't know. The way we judge is we, we have our categories. But I tell the judges, take your time. Look at everything, too. Even if there's something that they don't like, give it attention. You know, give it a moment. The person that's up there, like I said, they think that their tattoos has the possibility to win. So give it attention, you know. Um, and when they, when they win the awards, like I said, it's, it's a really big milestone for the artists that come to Hell City. If you win a Hell City award, a lot, a lot of artists say, I knew I made it when I won awards at Hell City. You know, so it's a, Hell City is a huge stepping stone in, in a lot of artists' careers nowadays as well. You know, and people recognize that. So if you do have Hell City awards in your shop, people know you're a heavy hitter. You know, you want to get some heavy hitting tattoos, some other heavy hitting artists. If you come out, you know, victorious with a Hell City award, that's that next level, you know. So, like, one thing that I always say is tattooing's given me so much. I work every day to give back to something that's given me so much. Oh, <laughs> it's awesome because of Hell City, over the years, like, one, it's a family-friendly event. We have airbrushing, temporary tattoos, things like that for the kids. The entertainment, the kids love it. Um, so I've always said Hell City's a family-friendly environment. We've seen kids that were here... And it's awesome that we're like five, six years old that we're here with their parents, you know, getting temporary tattoos. And we did that as a way to paint a positive light on the next generation of, of kids and, you know, the upcoming possible tattoo collectors and artists. Nowadays, 21 years later, those five-year-olds are 26. They're in there either getting tattooed or they were influenced to become a tattoo artist, you know, over the years from coming to Hell City and, you know, the influence that we've had on, on people visually and artistically and things like that so nowadays we've seen multiple generations of people you know of kids coming up through Hell City that are either now collectors enthusiasts or tattoo artists you know and I and I do hear from like some of the older kids they're like I've been coming here since I was like this big you know so that's a really good feeling knowing that what I meant to do my, in, my intention was to paint a positive light on the generation to kill that stigma that tattooing's had on the generations and paint a positive light. And mission accomplished. We see those kids here getting tattooed, entering the competitions. There was a kid tonight on the stage, actually, that has pretty much grown up here at Hell City. Now he's an adult competing on the stage. So that's a good feeling, knowing that we like influenced the next generation of, of kids. Ladies and gentlemen, an absolute powerhouse at our show. Uh, we love your artwork, and uh, we love you as a person, man. You're, you're a really good dude, and I, I'm proud to call you my friend. So last night, Derb surprised me with the award for uh, making the art for the show. And here's the painting. My inspiration for the painting, it, I kind of looked at the list of artists who had made previous art for the show and what they have made. And I wanted to keep the theme, but make it unique. And um, I really love skulls. I really love ethereal elements. I love thinking about the universe as a whole and how we're kind of connected to it. And the third eye is that. It's also kind of representative of Hell City as a whole in terms of how we are all connected at this show. You know, you go to other shows, it's very scattered, very separate. Everybody's in their own cliques. At Hell City, um, it's more of a community of people who want to be together. And it's really unique in that way. Uh, girls with daddy issues, stripper poles, painted like candy canes. Hell City hotties, Hell City hotties, rock.
That's all I got to say. I know it's a group of people that um, get judged. Like this community is definitely a community that gets judged from their appearance and assumptions are made. It happens with everybody. I mean, we, we even joke around about other communities of people or how straight they look or whatever it is. So people definitely get judged here, but it's it's really cool to, um, I, I don't feel like I need to be reminded of it, but it's just, I think a reminder for people that uh, they're people, like everybody's people and they're good people and they mean well and they want to talk about things and have good conversation like anybody else. Well, I mean, tattooing's always had a stigmatic, controversial view, you know, throughout history. So with calling it Hell City and the imagery that we use, it gets, gets your attention. It makes you go, what the hell's that? You know, literally. And then you realize it's not, we're not Satanists or anything like that, but it is a catchy name. It catches your attention, you know? So when people come to Hell City, they got a whole different view. They might think it's going to be this evil, you know, thing, but they come and everybody here is super nice, super friendly, and it's a, like a really good experience for them. But the shock value of the word Hell City works. It resonates. It sticks with people. It's, you know, you see it written somewhere, the word hell, you know, it, it lights your eyes up. So it's not really an anti-religious thing. It's more of a way to, uh, you know, get, get somebody's attention on, on something that's controversial, you know. Um, it, it actually goes back with Hell City Industries. Hell City Industries with the clothing line. Way back then, my tattoo studio that I was renting on High Street, a church bought the building. And the church kicked out all the elderly folks that were living upstairs, kicked all the businesses out. And that kind of got me onto, you know, trying to stir the pot a little bit, you know, igniting the flames of, you know, my future and stuff like that. So when they kicked us out, they were soulless about it, you know. And that kind of put me into this, like, not an anti-religious mode, but definitely something kind of like poking the bear, poking fun at it. So I, I thought with that, my next move was, you know, not religion, Hell City, you know. So we ended up moving a block down the street from my old studio so that the, the shot could see it. And that's one of the things when I put Hell City Industries on there. It was kind of a way to be like, hello, I'm just right over here now, you know. So that was kind of the thing that kind of kicked me into going the, the hell route was because I got kicked out by the church. So when the, when the church kicked everybody out, kicked us out of the studio, before we, had, we came out with shirts and cards that said, even Jesus was pierced. And he was on a cross with body piercings and jewelry and stuff like that. So I just started poking the bear, you know. And since then, I mean, it gets a lot of attention. You get a lot of people talking and stuff like that. And it works. We're here 21 years later, and that church does not own that building anymore. But like we always say, hell is real. If you're from Ohio, you know that. But it's everything I could wish for. Thank you, Columbus. The, the people are really, really nice. And the talent is off the charts. And so, like... I always appreciate talent that's especially in stuff that I'm not um, good at so it's like um, I'm not a good artist but seeing other people at, at the top of their game like be so creative and so talented is I, I love it so here's a general idea uh, we'll have five artists up here on five different easels they're gonna be all working in charcoal Basically what they're going to do over the course of time is rotate every five minutes and all collaborate on all five pieces. I appreciate that uh, very much that Derb keeps the Art Fusion experiment alive with the show uh, that started back in 2000 and uh, he's been running it every year and keeping it alive which I really appreciate because I one of the founders from way back in 2000, so, and I don't really, it's kind of dormant now, you know, but Derb keeps it alive, so I really appreciate that about what he's doing as well. And it helps who are the Being able to come be around all this creativity is, is super amazing. Uh, the wet paint project is is a pretty awesome thing because um, it kind of takes a I don't know you get to take a break from tattooing from from an artist perspective uh, as someone that tattoos and paints as well the artwork's always pretty much kind of uh, 
up my alley, so to speak. Yeah, I hope the, the wet paint keeps going for a long time. It's uh, definitely going to be kind of my go-to when I come to Hell City now. I told Derb, it's like, sorry, man, I don't know if I'm going to tattoo your convention anymore. I'll uh, come paint, though. watch the team work so hard all year round and then even on the week of Hell City I see them load in on the Tuesday and then load out on the Monday and it's so great to see how hard these people work because everyone just loves the show loves everyone so it's just a whole bowl of love Hell City. I started with Hell City I believe in 2019 it was actually my first tattoo expo that led into several others and just the family and the community here has been great so far the employees are great. Everybody I've worked with here is great. I built a lot of friendships here, met a lot of great people over the years that I probably would have never met had I not attended Hell City. Derb does such, and everybody on the crew does such a great job to make sure that um, the artists are well taken care of, the caliber of people here. Um, I don't know, just all of it, man. Like, it's just a really good show. Derb with Hell City has put an impact on tattooing the will last for eternity and it will be something and someone that's talked about way long probably after it's gone. This is like the best show and it's such an honor to be here like I said. So yeah. I want to say thanks to the Hell City crew. Thank you everybody. One, I couldn't fathom where Hell City would have gone. Coming from just the idea of doing it to actually doing the show and making it, you know, Hell City, you know. I never thought my convention would go on to be so influential to the tattoo industry. I knew I had an idea, but I didn't know how great the idea was for tattooing, a way to better conventions, bring more of an artistic spotlight on the shows, you know. We did a documentary um, that took seven years in the making at one point, and I thought that was going to be close to the end of the road. Like, all right, where's the finish line, you know? But we've kept it going, you know, and it's just gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. So with that, I don't feel like I should stop it anytime soon. You know, it's still influencing. We're still seeing those generation of artists coming through, you know. And um, like I said, it's it's I never fathomed it to go where it's gone, you know. So we we continue. We uh, we want to con keep continuing to do the show, you know, bring it up, bring it. Uh, maybe we don't know where else we'll travel with it. But we want to keep it going, not just for ourselves, but for the industry, for the community. We want to see those next generations, you know, so. We are not going to stop Hell City. We're going to keep it going strong. We're going to keep the flame ignited and, you know, keep the crew working and stuff like that. And who knows? We may have another 10 years, another 15 years. If I pass away, I want it to be handed on, you know? I don't want Hell City to stop if anything happened to me or anything like that, you know? I want the flame to keep burning because I think it's such an important thing for the tattoo community to get together 
in these situations at the conventions, celebrate tattooing, you know, and, and really like just keep it going, you know. So hopefully one day I'll just pass the torch on and Sid will take it. Hounds of hell. Oh, yeah. Is there any way I could, uh, we could get them all into one room so I could, uh, see them at the same time? And, uh, bring me some hot sauce. <laughs>